Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about cult culture. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video that I made where I think I really only mentioned it in passing where I made a comment about the cult startup culture that might exist in certain companies. An example would have been Google. Uh, in this scenario it was Google. It not exclusive to them in any way uh, and basically a subscriber asked the startup cult culture is interesting I would like to hear more about it so this is of course not like an official official phenomenon or anything like that it's just something that I've seen uh, and been part of I'm very sorry to say in a few companies and it's more than one company so it's not this is in no way exclusive to like startups it just happens to happen in startups I would say that this is something that usually happens in it's not strictly necessary a small company but it's easier for for it to be a small company because you the I, at least what this is what I believe the what the way this gets started is by having uh, managers who usually are the founders of the company or they're very closely tied to the founders of the company and then what practically every single person who's ever run a business for more than a few years let's say 10 years uh, will tell you is that there is just as with everything there is a progression like a maturity as a company as someone who runs a company or being a manager or anything you develop right and the most common number one mistake every single person who hires people does when it's for their own company is that they hire people with the idea that these people are going to be just like me they're going to love this company they're going to be dedicated etc etc and the further up the ladder you go or like the longer you go uh, you will usually see that that's actually not the case uh, and the worst managers are, and people who run a business are usually the people who can't tell the people who produce value from the ass kissers. And that's where the cult culture comes from. Because what, you're basi what ba basically happens is that the idea is, more, is very similar to what you would see in a fraternity or something similar like that. You have a few guys or girls or whatever, sororities I think it's called for women or something like that. You have this club where you have a few like in the inner circle, you have these high, in the, in the companies usually the founders. They're like super dedicated, super enthusiastic because of course this is their life, this is their thing, right? And they're the people who have the most invested into this thing. And the closer you get to reflect the ideals of that central mechanism or whatever the more in you're going to be and uh, then of course you will see things such as there are certain culture values like things that the, the group cares more or less about and then you have optional but it's not really optional uh, like events and practices and things that you should be doing and so forth that is quote unquote strongly encouraged and it's just fun if we do this thing together uh, this is the thing like I always find this this is probably the thing that is most difficult for me as a human and that is that uh, I, I have a hard time telling if someone is manipulating me like a sociopath or a con artist or something like that or if they're just really really zealous or stupid or like brainwashed call it whatever you want because the states are so similar for me like I usually say that it's um, if you are a diehard fanatic you usually behave with the same complete naive mindset that we're gonna take over the world and nothing is wrong ever everything is a good idea that's sort of the same thing you have from you get from someone who's just trying to sell you something or trying to manipulate you it's the that's why it's so hard for me to trust people who are like that and the thing that I found at the very least is that uh, it really comes down to the maturity level of the managers. Uh, if you have, and that's unfortunately the situation with many startups, uh, it's not always the case, but uh, usually the startups are run by people in their 20s or their 30s or like up to their 40s and so forth. And depending, and for most of them, they, they 
this might, might be their first time ever running a company. And so you have people who have absolutely no experience. And as I said, they're going to go through a journey themselves, just as anybody goes through a journey. And they're going to learn what works and what doesn't work. And almost all of them are going to do that mistake, as I said. They're going to... Uh, they're going to start expecting and also hiring almost exclusively people who pro who project their own value system, even if that's not necessarily the best thing for the company. And this is also, and th that's where this kind of culture comes from, because they're it's like uh, you know, if the king or the queen surrounds her his or herself with a bunch of yes people. Well, they're gonna have a good time when everybody's you know just agreeing with them or trying to be just as th like them. But when things starts going the other way and things aren't working out so well, uh, they might start to find out that you know this whole enthusiastic everything is a good idea and we're just gonna be awesome to each other all the time. That just works as long as everything is perfect. But it's not usually the case, and you will probably start to understand why most companies, like you, the average failure rate of a uh, startup is about 90%. So one in ten startups actually make any type of profit, and most of them burn through, and like in like investors and like all of this stuff, be way like they crash way before they even become a remotely serious company. Because as I said, it's usually this inexperience that you kind of have to overcome scaling things the scale up as we call it is a very difficult thing and the culture thing or like the cult culture is something that usually it usually happens in those earlier days because i mean if you go to like the really big companies it's not it depends on how much you invest into office culture because there are benefits to the cult culture for the company of course uh, as well uh, the because the, the the other thing is not that great like the other thing which a lot of companies struggle with is complete apathy where nobody at the corporate level cares yeah they don't give two shits about how it goes for the company uh, the one thing i can tell you if you're in this sort of cult company uh, usually this is what i've found at the very least the way you can tell if you are in a cult company is if when you have what would be considered normal expectations on the job that you do such as for example uh, not working overtime all the time or not having been quote unquote roped in and almost forced into social events on your free time or uh, you, you know, not having to work weekends without good cause or things like that when you start to sense that you expecting the same normal sort of stuff you would get from like an average workplace and when that is met with you know resent well i'm not saying resentment but you i hope you understand what i say when i say social punishment things where this is not just something that is okay it's something that is a little bit frowned upon or someone is going to look twice at you for you know i don't know going home on a normal work uh, on, on like a Monday at a normal time and things like that and when that gets to the point where people are starting to question your commitment to the company that's when you should really start thinking about where you are because it's very likely that you're in on one of these cult companies and as I said it's really it's usually very easy to spot them so what I want you to take away from this is that cult culture it's not a startup exclusive thing. The basic concept is very similar to a fraternity or, or a religious sect or something like that. There are differences, of course, uh, because these things, so well, it's a or a pyramid scheme, whatever. You usually have a central group of people who get really chummy with each other, usually cl as close as possibly they can to the founders of the company. And the founders are usually more responsible for this happening than anybody else because they basically promote out their own value system to everybody else in the group which means that we all they they own they try to primarily hire people that they believe are a reflection of themselves and they very very quickly become a less inclusive group they become like very one like everybody's a reflection in some fashion of the founders and what that leads to usually is that it works fairly well at small scale. It does not work at the larger scale. It becomes very, very tricky to maintain it at large scale. And uh, the way that you know if you're in this sort of cult type of thing is, as I said, it's usually uh, how 
much social punishment or encouragement you get to do things that are optional, that are not really optional, or where you just have expectations that are completely normal in any other job and that's kind of weird in this company and people question your commitment and things like that where you feel almost forced a little bit to do more than what is normally expected of somebody who has who has a job when you're getting into that space and you very clearly see that some people are very favored not necessarily because they're the most productive but because they simply are the best reflection of the value system of the people in power that's when you should start, then you're probably in one of these more cult-like uh, companies. And it's not necessarily a bad thing to be in a cult if you're one of the most zealous. It can work very much in your favor and everything's going, you know, if everything's going well. But it's not so fun to be someone who doesn't really fit in with the v culture values in a cult company. Uh, let's just say that that's not the funnest thing in the world. Have a great day.